Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and welcome to Extraordinary Women TV. Well, I've got a great show lined up for you today. In the first half hour, you are going to meet Caroline Riseborough, who is the uh, Vice President of Public Affairs for World Vision Canada. Uh, later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute. When I ask my guests for their top success tip, you'll hear Caroline's. In the second half of the show, we'll be talking about how referral marketing can grow your business. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. Well, Caroline Riseboro, it's nice mm -hmm. to have you on the show. Uh, Caroline is a Vice President of Public Affairs World Vision. And World Vision, of course, is a, is a Christian relief development an advocacy organization dedicated to working with children, families, and communities to overcome poverty and injustice. That was a mouthful. That was indeed. Good job. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, it's great having you on the show today. It's great to be here. Now, um, you have uh, an interesting job. Hmm. I, I would agree with you. I definitely think so. Yeah, it's really an inspiring one. Um, and you've been with World Vision for about 10 years, but prior mm -hmm. to that, uh, you worked mm -hmm. in the advertising mm -hmm. field. Let's just trace your career. Sure, sure. Well, when I graduated, um, it was around sort of the dot-com boom, and I went to go work for a small dot-com startup, and then uh, eventually found myself in the uh, hustle and bustle of the advertising world. Uh, working in Toronto and I was working for one of the largest ad agencies in Canada and I worked on a huge telecom account um, but yet something was missing I, I would remember just going to work and thinking to myself there's something just not feeling right and um, sort of through a whole kind of journey of self-examination I, um, I just decided uh, one day I walked in and I quit and I didn't know what I would be doing next but I knew I needed to do something that really followed my passion and uh, through a series of events I um, figured out what that passion is and found myself working at World Vision. Now you know working for an ad agency is something that a lot of people dream about. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people that want to break into the advertising industry and they can't because you know there's only so many jobs but mm -hmm. you had that star job and yet it wasn't something that fulfilled you. Yeah. People actually told me, you are crazy for leaving. Um, you know, here you have this job, you have this potentially amazing career ahead of you, uh, you're working on one of the biggest accounts out there, um, and yet you're leaving because it doesn't feel right. Um, so I, d I really went against, I think, the grain or against the status quo, and it was definitely a risk. Uh, there was definitely a lot of fear, but I just knew I needed to do something that followed my, my passion. And my passion was really about using my gifts, my talents, my smarts to um, contribute to society and to, to improve the world. And I had no idea I could mix that passion with these advertising and marketing skills that I had developed over the course of a, a number of years. But I found myself working for World Vision Canada and I was working in their um, marketing and fundraising department where I was using those very same skills that I had, had used in advertising. But instead of um, creating more share, shareholder, or shareholder value, I was um, helping to save lives for some of the world's most most vulnerable children. So it was, um, you know, a, a very scary step, but it was one that I, I found really paid off in the long run. When you when you were, you know, when it wasn't feeling right for you, um, was it that you were unhappy or unfulfilled or, I mean, what was that that sort of feeling when you walked in the door every day? for work did you just go oh my god I don't want to be here mm -hmm. it was a combination of that but sometimes it was even just a little bit more subtle it wasn't that I walked mm. into work every day and dreaded um, the day ahead of me but it was just something felt a little bit off and you know I've come to realize over the years that a lot of people have that feeling um, but yet you know it's very true a lot a lot of people do yeah. but society just kind of tells you well you know what you have to get a good job and and that's part of building a career and, um, and stay with it stick with it and stick is, with is it for as long as you say. can because you don't want to look like you're jumping around jobs exactly yeah. but um, you know sometimes in life we need to take some risks and I think you know there's that gut feeling that sometimes we often ignore but you know I would say to a lot of people follow that because it can um, you'll find yourself in extraordinary places when you do so so listen to your intuition so what were the steps that you went through I mean the process that you went through when you said okay um, 
I know that this is the direction I want to go in. Mm -hmm. Did you seek a life coach or did you, um, did you do your, have your own spiritual practice? Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you come to that realization, okay, this is it, mm -hmm. I, I want to go into this direction and then found yourself at World Vision? Yeah, it's a great, great question. I think it was a number of those things. Um, I will say though, you know, I, I shared this news with a lot of people around me. I had some people that were very supportive, but I had a lot of naysayers. And I think, you know, people have to be prepared. When you go against the grain, you're, you're gonna have a number of naysayers. In fact, they may be the majority. But um, you know, make sure you keep listening to that sort of you know s still small voice inside of you. And I, you know, I also have a deep faith. Um, I, I really sort of uh, went back to um, my my Christian faith and uh, you know prayed a lot about it too. And um, it just sort of waited for the right door to open. And I think when you're following your passion. Um, it, it does, and it's just a matter of time, but you do have to persevere, and you have to be patient, and you have to be ready for the highs and the lows on the journey. Well, um, so, some great person said um, greatness didn't happen over time, or sorry, greatness didn't happen overnight. Yeah. So uh, anything great has happened over the course of a long period of time, yeah. so patience is perhaps um, key. Mm -hmm. And of course, World Vision um, is Christian-based, so mm -hmm. um, this is something that's very important to you. Yeah, definitely. It's a great opportunity to be able to marry my values um, with, with my work each day. But th I think there's also lots of opportunity for people to um, take a look at their values and say, how can I live out those values in my in my day-to-day -day career? And oftentimes people think that they can't do that, but in fact they can. So whether you're passionate about justice or whether you're passionate about um, helping some of the most downtrodden, whatever that value is, you can definitely marry that with, with your career. It's not just about making making money. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your role at World Vision mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in, the world, in, the, in the role of public affairs. Sure. You do a lot of advocacy work. We do, yeah. uh, whether it's working directly with government, working directly with international governments, or even working with uh, Canadians just to put the issues on the radar. The most Canadians have no idea uh, what's happening uh, a world away. That's, that's a lot of the work that we do, um, a lot of the work that I, I do. What are the, uh, some of the biggest uh, advocacy issues you're dealing with mm -hmm. at present? Mm -hmm. uh, one advocacy issue that we have been working on for a number of years is uh, child and maternal health. So a lot of Canadians don't, don't know this, but there's um, almost 8 million children dying each year under the age of 5 simply because they don't have access to basic health care, basic nutrition. And m the majority of these deaths are prevented. So we've been working with the Government of Canada as well as um, international bodies like the United Nations, uh, the, um, the World Health Organization, to try and tackle this because there's some simple, simple interventions like, for instance, providing birthing attendance for mothers who are um, about to give birth that can help save millions of children's lives. Uh, I came across a really interesting stat. Uh, United Nations estimates that 66 million children around the world are affected every year by disasters such as floods, earthquakes, and drought. Mm -hmm. 66 million. It's mm -hmm. really hard to fathom. Well, if you think about it, it's double the population of Canada. And yeah. that's just um, children who are impacted, not to mention... In disaster. In disaster, not to yeah. mention the, the number of family members that are also impacted. So it is a huge number, and, and unfortunately we're seeing that increase. Now, sort of what... Um, I mean, child sponsorship is, is a very uh, big part of what World Vision does as well. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what percentage of child sponsorship versus r relief work, aid work, does... You know, what, what's the ratio there for World Vision? Mm -hmm. Is it most of your work uh, relief work or mostly child sponsorship or mm -hmm. really 50-50? It's hard to say because I think the split differs every year depending upon mm -hmm. um, what's happening around the world. So many people remember the, the Haiti earthquake a few years ago. Right, uh, yeah. that, that was obviously um, a significant response for us. Um, but for the most part, we're looking to try and address the root causes of poverty. And one of the best ways to do that is through child sponsor 
sponsorship where we have a Canadian link up with a child and their family for the long term. And what we're able to do is build uh, the resiliency of that family so that they're able to earn more income to send their children to school, so that they're able to um, provide that, that child with nutritious food. And those are really addressing the root causes of poverty. Do you have uh, a child that you sponsor? I do, a, a child from Zimbabwe. Oh, fantastic. Um, it sounds like it's such a, a wonderful um, organization and what a great cause. Mm -hmm. You know, how much, how, much, uh, how much is it a day now that uh, is really, you know, required or effective to make a difference in a child's life mm -hmm. in Africa? Well, in terms you, of donations. In terms of donations, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can sponsor a child for $35 a month, and um, I can assure you that, uh, and I can sh you know, assure, assure the viewers today, that when they do that, um, they really have an amazing impact in helping to uh, lift that child out of poverty. I've seen um, children who have become part of our sponsorship programs in the early days, and then I've seen um, children who have been sponsored by Canadians for five or ten years, and the difference is staggering. And, um, you know, I would encourage Canadians, sometimes they feel like they can't make a difference because it's a world away, but they really can uh, change, change the life of a child forever. Now, Caroline, we're going to uh, take a break, and this means mm -hmm. it's my Good to Know Minute, and mm -hmm. I know that you have a great success tip, so my, jump right in there. My success tip would be uh, follow your passion. I think life is too short to be doing something that's, um, that you're not passionate about and that's not building your soul. And that can sometimes mean taking a risk, but I would say, you know, take that risk because it does pay off in the long run. You feel so much more alive when you're, you're living out your passion. Well, thanks for that. Live out your passion. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, more with Caroline Riseborough, uh, who's here with World Vision Canada. So stay right there. Welcome back to the show. I'm joined by Caroline Riseborough, who's the Vice President of Public Affairs for World Vision Canada. Um, fascinating organization, mm. does really great work. Um, and one of the things that uh, World Vision uh, is quite involved in, um, in the relief work is, is working with celebrities. Or there's a lot of celebrities that lend their name or, or do a lot of work with, with World Vision. Um, and you've just had a really interesting campaign mm -hmm. with one of those celebrities. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Uh, well, we just got back from uh, Ethiopia with uh, Cardinal Official, which many people know is uh, very talented and, and popular. Um, music artist uh, on the Canadian music scene and inter internationally and he went to Ethiopia and was able to um, I think see the devastation that's that's happened with the Horn of Africa emergency but then also take a look at some of our programs that have helped families uh, and children in particular um, make it through through this emergency um, and, and he's doing a, not a documentary but he's doing a, a special on his uh, experience is that right that's right. So uh, we actually partnered with eTalk Canada okay. on yeah. this, and uh, they um, joined us on the trip. And uh, he will be featured in, in the coming weeks in terms of talking about what he saw, what he experienced, and um, just also what he's passionate about now because of what he, he saw while in Ethiopia. Now, um, I know that you've worked with in the past Jane Arden, Tom Cochran, Alex Trebek, mm -hmm. Cassie Campbell. Yes. Um, you've worked with quite a, a, a bunch of celebrities. Does, uh, one question I, I, I really want to ask is, um, does it make a difference in having celebrities involved with uh, mm -hmm. you know, relief organizations uh, mm -hmm. um, in, in fighting poverty and whatnot? Um, does it help? Does it make a difference? Do you see sort of more money coming in, uh, more interest, more awareness mm -hmm. overall? It's a great question. I think uh, the challenge has oftentimes been that there's these inter humanitarian emergencies around the world. So for example, with the recent famine in the Horn of Africa, that was going on for many, many months before uh, Canadians and the world started paying attention to it. And oftentimes, we're trying to get these emergencies on the radar of Canadians, on the Canadian media, media and it can sometimes be very difficult. But then all of a sudden, if you uh, transplant a celebrity into the situation, 
situation, um, people's eyes start start focusing on them, and they're able to use their celebrity to raise issues and causes that normally would not be on the radar of Canadians. So. I would say that celebrities have um, an immense following, um, an immense cachet with uh, with the public that can allow them to use their celebrity to draw Canadians' attention to to some of the um, most. I think pressing humanitarian issues around the world and so as a result at World Vision uh, we try and uh, partner with celebrities as much as possible. Now you have um, of course not uh, not only do you have the relief work and the child sponsorship but you've got the gift catalog as well mm -hmm. where people here right here in Canada can uh, you know, put their money toward mosquito nets and uh, helping women uh, start businesses mm -hmm. uh, in some of these countries. Let's talk about that. Well, it was interesting. We, we did a poll a number of years ago and we asked Canadians, what do you need for Christmas this year? And we gave them a, a myriad of options. And we found that 86% of Canadians came back to us and said, I don't need anything for Christmas. And Isn't that interesting? It is very interesting. And in yeah. fact, they said, I'd rather see that money that would normally be given as a gift do something to, to improve the world. So we uh, developed the gift catalog about 10 years ago. We were one of the first charities in Canada to, to offer the gift catalog. And what the gift catalog is, is um, someone can go to uh, worldvision.ca. They can choose a, d a whole different range of Christmas gifts. Um, with a whole range of different price points and they can give um, a chicken or mosquito nets or a loan to start a small business to a family in Africa in lieu of a Christmas present and they can um, share that joy with, with someone special that they, they care about. I remember when you started the gift catalog, of course it's grown substantially mm -hmm. over the years, but uh, I think in the early days it was you could buy a goat. <laughs> You could right? yeah, definitely. I, I think <laughs> our most our, our our most popular item still remains the goat okay. after many the many beloved years. Goat. The beloved right, goat. Yeah. Um, we even get people asking, you know, can World Vision follow that goat for me and, and tell me how the goat is a number of years later. But we've really expanded uh, a lot of the um, uh, products that are in the catalog. And I think some of the more exciting ones are things like um, giving a loan to a woman who can start a small business because um, that loan can often transform her life and her family's life in ways that, that um, are, are just life-changing. We oftentimes see them being able to earn enough money that they're feeding their, their family better, they're able to send all their children to school. And um, you know, to think we might give up that Christmas sweater uh, and, and give this life-changing gift instead is just, I think, really heartwarming during, during that, the, the Christmas and holiday season. Yes, of course, Christmas is coming up, so, uh, um, you know, absolutely consider uh, a donation through World Vision. Um, how many children are sponsored now through World Vision? Mm -hmm. Over 500,000 children wow. are sponsored through um, generous Canadians from all across Canada. And this is just Canada? Just Canada. Right. Around the world, um, there's many more uh, people who, who sponsor children through World Vision. Um, now, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, um, either for finding out more about the organization or to get involved, how do they contact you? They can go to our website, worldvision.ca. All the contact information is there. There's a number of ways that you can get involved, whether it's through uh, giving a donation, volunteering, being part of one of our advocacy campaigns to address some of the root causes of poverty. So there's, there's a number of ways, depending upon what Canadians are interested in. Do you love what you do? I do. Why? I have to ask you, what is it? What is the spark that it uh, creates for you? Again, I think it just goes back to that passion, living mm -hmm. out your passion. I've always uh, struggled with the fact that we have so much as Canadians. And um, if Canadians get a chance to travel, they start to realize that our quality of life is so much higher than, than most peoples in the world. Um, and I, I believe when, when we're given a lot, we need to give back. And uh, I'm, I'm so pleased that I get to wake up every day and be able to give back to, to Canadians, offer them the opportunity to uh, bring joy into their life because they share of, of their resources. But then I also know I'm, I'm helping to change the lives of children a world away. So what, what could be better? 
Well, Caroline, uh, our time is up, and I've really enjoyed uh, talking to you and finding out more about what you do at World Vision and, and about the organization. So thanks for your time to be here today and share your story with uh, my viewers. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be speaking with uh, Crystal Wintels, who's here to talk about the uh, referral Canadian referral, <laughs> I've just blown that. I just love it when you blow your segues. <laughs> the Referral Institute Canada. So stay right there.